Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read from verse 11. Let's see what Paul said to the Ephesians because this is where also he took 12 of them and began to train them. Amen. He says, now these are the gifts. I'm reading from New Living Translation. He says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. These are the gifts Christ gave to the church. Amen. Number one is the apostles. Number two is the prophets. Number three is the evangelists and the pastors and teachers. Praise the Lord. I want us to go to verse 12 and I want you to underline it. It says, their responsibility, their responsibility is to do what? Is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Their responsibility, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. And I said to you yesterday, you can be in a church without having a pastor. You can be in a church without having a teacher. You can be in a church without having a mentor. But I said to you, yet I show you a more excellent way. Be in a church and have a pastor. Be in a church and have a teacher. Be in a church and have what? A mentor. Why? Because you are equipping is impossible without these people. He gave gifts to his church. He gave gifts to his church. He gave these gifts to his church. For what? For the, they have the responsibility to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Verse 13. Everybody, this will. Verse 13. Let me read for you. He said, this will continue. This process of equipping, training, we do what? It will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up. I want you to underline that. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ, not the standard of man. Until we all come to a place where we are measuring up. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Not to society. Not our tradition. Not our parents. The conformity that we are asked to achieve here is to be like Christ. Is to be like Christ. And that is where we have the greatest challenges because... Many of us don't look at Christ as our standard because we just see him as the Lord afar off. But, but Christ is our standard. Christ is our level. And that is why many people that get offended in church because somebody did something to them and something happened and something went wrong and they were not happy and they left the church is because they have not behold Christ as their standard. In Hebrews 12, he said, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus as what? You can say as our standard in Christianity. Praise the Lord. Looking unto Christ as what? Our standard. When you do that, it doesn't matter when your leader fails. You will see him and help him. When your pastor fails, you will see him and you help him. Because, because the disciples failed to no, are you hearing me? Some of the disciples failed. Some of the great men of God in the Old Testament, they failed. Wherever that we got the impression that a pastor cannot fail is an error and a heresy that is destroying many pastors. Many pastors, destroying many ministries. One allegation like this, they say, they can, how can you say you are a pastor? One mistake, a hey, pastor, a pastor, is a Christian like you. He deals with challenges like you, even greater challenges, much more challenges. And so pastors need encouragement. They need prayer. They need support. But because you have not been trained 
And pastors set themselves as superhumans. And so when they fail, it is catastrophic in the body. When they miss it, it's a disaster in the church. In the military, when generals fail, they cover him. In politics, when generals fail, they cover them. In church, when generals fail, they kill them. And yet, and yet, they pay army generals very well. In politics, they pay politicians very well. In Christianity, most pastors don't get paid. And then when they miss it, they're assassinated on the spot. People don't even think they have family. What they will do to them, what they will say to them. Where did we get this from? Where did we get this from? Donald Trump just led U.S. for four years with a pack of lies. Donald Trump, he led U.S. for four years with lies, and he's still there with strong followers. When leaders fail in the body of Christ, we're supposed to cover them and shield them. Because Peter failed, and Jesus did not dethrone him. Did Peter not fail? Peter failed. But because when you have people that are not equipped, they say, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Pastors stole money. Hey! There's nothing somebody will know here in this life. Bro. A pastor stole money. Meanwhile, you stole last week. But because you are not a pastor, you are qualified to be forgiven. You lied last week. Because you are not a pastor. At least I'm not a pastor, you say. If they put you, if they put you on this pulpit for one month, you may die. Because they work on that pulpit, you don't know it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't know it. You don't know it. This is not a stage. The world call it stage. It is a pulpit, an altar of Jehovah. It's not a stage. Stage is for performance. Praise the Lord. It's not. Many of you don't know the weight that comes with that pulpit or the altar. While pastor is preaching, he's thinking about how do we settle this? How do we take care of this? How do we take care of this? How do we take care of this? The world celebrates their own, cover their mistakes. The church exposes their own, betray them and assassinate them. I remember what happened. I can't remember exactly when I read it about the pastor. And they were, both the church and the, and the society were writing and doing all kinds of things and all that. All that. And then somebody quietly wrote, he said, this pastor, this man of God that has failed, I just want everybody else to know he is a husband. He is a father. He is a brother. He is my father, the person wrote. And so he wrote so that people will understand that there are lives behind every pastor. There are dependents behind every pastor. Praise the Lord. And Paul said this, we continue in verse 13. Until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full, matured in the Lord. Training brings maturity. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to read the same verses 11, 12 to you from the Message Bible. <laughs> the same Ephesians chapter 4. But, but from the Message Bible, it says, He handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gift, filled earth with his gift. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teachers. To do what? To train Christ followers in skilled servant work. I want you to underline, well, you, you, if you don't have a message, but we can't underline it, but it says, to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church. 
You are training is to make it possible for you for you to walk in the in the church, for you to walk in the body of Christ. It's not enough to be saved and say that you Peter and Paul. Peter preached to the multitude. Peter got the multitude born again. Paul never had the kind of crowd that Peter had. But you know what Paul did? Paul was properly taught and educated. We read that from Acts chapter 6. But Paul raised disciples. He reproduced himself in many. And so the gospel traveled further with Paul than with Peter. He was able to establish more churches. You know why? Paul trained his disciples. Peter preached to the multitude. Some of you can be heading churches in the next five years from now by the grace of God. And you will have your roots in this training. You will know what is right. You will do what is right. Praise the Lord. Your interest and devotion in this message is important. I want us to go back to Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 14. From verse 14. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 14. Let me read from verse 13 so that we continue with him. He said, this will continue. The training will continue. The equipping will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Standard of Christ. Praise the Lord. Then verse 14. Then, then, we, who is we? Who is we? Say me. We will no longer be immature like children. Anybody that has not been equipped is a child. Is immature. We behave like a child. We talk like a child. We act like a child. Praise the Lord. And also, the person that trains you will determine the kind of maturity you will have. When, <clears throat> when Paul said that he was a student of Gamaliel, who? What did you say? Gamaliel. Hey, Gamaliel. Gamaliel. Who do you say that trained you? Gamaliel. Don't, don't go near him. Why? The Bible said Gamaliel was a respected doctor. Praise the Lord. The reason why many people are in bondage, it is not because that they themselves went for idol worship. It's because they were born on the altar and the foundation of idol worship, and they never dealt with it. They got born again. Listen, they got born again. And when they got born again, they didn't bother to understand the foundation on which they were born. I said something on Sunday, and I'll say it again today. Many of you, you are born again. You are a new creation, isn't it? Isn't it? Some of you, in the night, you've been having the challenge. Somebody will come and sleep with you, forcefully violating you. And when you wake up, you know that you've been violated. True or false? Are you not a new creation? You are a new creation. Why is it happening? You have prayed in tongue before you slept, and it happened. You did everything you know. You've gone for deliverance. I am not against deliverance. Listen, I am not against deliverance. I, I cast out demons when they show up in the surface. You cast them out when the needs appear. I don't believe in dedicating a service for deliverance. But when there is a need for it, you cast out the devil. Praise the Lord. When Jesus was ministering the word, when the devil shows up, he cast out the devil. He never organized deliverance service. That is to give too much acknowledgement to the devil. But let me tell you with the problem of going for deliverance. When you go for deliverance and you are delivered, the demons are cast out quite all right. In 24 hours, they can come back into your life. You know why? You know why? <laughs> you see, you are the owner of your body. You are the owner of your soul. 
Somebody can make an intrusion by the anointing and cast a devil. No problem. Somebody can do it. But remember, there is no neutrality in the realm of the spirit. There is no emptiness. Meaning that either you are possessed by the spirit of God or you are possessed by demons. You have to be one. Now, when somebody delivers you from demonic oppression, immediately, immediately, what do you do? You need to begin to feed your spirit with the word of God. You need to feed yourself with the word of God. There is nothing that keeps the devil away but the word of God. Are you hearing me? You, you know, a lot of people, they've gone to a deliverance so many times. They manifest the same thing all over and over again. And people keep saying, why are they manifesting the same thing? Same thing? As long as you do not feed your spirit, as long as you do not charge your spirit, as long as you did not reposition yourself spiritually, the demons will keep on coming back. He was a respected doctor. He was known. He had authority. He had influence. Yes. It is not enough for you to find a church near you and say you want to be trained there because it's convenient. It doesn't work like that. When people want their children to go to a good school, do they choose the school closest to them? What do they do? No, what do they do? Many people are looking for schools outside Nigeria for their words now. True or false? The entire educational system in Nigeria, people, don't, people have lost faith in it. Is it not true? Praise the Lord. They don't have faith in the educational system of the nation. Not of one school, of the nation. Ghana schools have more credibility than Nigerian schools. True or false? Thank you. Kotonou here. Schools in Kotonou have more credibility. Why is it that when it comes to spiritual items, people look for the convenience? Instead of the quality. No. Why is it that when it comes to spiritual thing, we look for convenience? When it comes to a restaurant, you want to get to a, a good restaurant that with, uh, you know they have good food. You will pass so many restaurants near your house. Bukatin, as they call them. Or bukas, right? Or mama put, or papa put. Or sister put. You will pass them. Until you get to KFC. Amen. Amen. And KFC, you have to drive all the way to a long distance until you get to KFC. But if it's church, you will enter anywhere they are sinking so that you can finish and go back home. And so your life is like that. Your life is a convenient Christian. No sacrifice, no labor, no commitment, and, and, and the Bible says, then, we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so cleverly they sound like the truth. You know, the, the devil is an expert in wrapping a liar to become like the truth. And so, you go online. You look for who will tell you what you want to hear. You've been wondering, is it scriptural to pay tight or not? And your pastor has told you that you should pay your tight in scriptural. You say, let me just think. Let me just see what others say about paying tight. Should we pay tight or not? And then you get, boom. An American preacher said, it's not scriptural to pay tight. He said, I know it. <laughs> and this is even an American. This is not even an African. This is an American. This is an American. And you judge because the educational level of Africa is rated lower than America. You also judge the ritual thing that Africa is lower than America. How wrong you are. How wrong you are. I've listened to something in TBN that I, I couldn't believe that it could be said on TBN. 
I used to make it a distance to watch TBN those days. And then when I hear some of the things from coming from here, I say, no, 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 something has gone wrong here. And also that happened when Pastor Chris wanted to go to TBN. And they rejected him. And the reason why they rejected him is because they said he's miracles and all that. That's TBN. I was there. I was then. That's how love war started. Because they wouldn't allow Pastor Chris to come into TBN. And like we said, and I said to you, for we know that all things work together for our good. The moment you love God and you are called, rejection is an opportunity. No is an opportunity. Cancellation is an opportunity. It's a result of how you handle it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Chris has taught us, and that teaching stays with me. He said a Christian can never be disadvantaged until you confirm it as a disadvantage. Until you do what? Confirm it as a disadvantage. A Christian can never be disadvantaged. The God of the heaven and the earth is your father. There's nothing he cannot reverse. The question is that you have enough faith in him that he can reverse it. That's the problem. As long as you are a child, you will not have enough faith in him. Because children walk by what they see and what they hear. Amen. That's children. They walk by their senses. Those that are matured, they don't walk by their senses. They don't walk by their... I, I have a teaching called the danger of evidence. The danger of evidence. And the devil is a manufacturer of evidence. You can see something. Let me give this example with myself and mommy. Since there's nothing anybody can do about that. Praise the Lord. She looked at me now. When we were cutting, before we got married... That's many, many years ago. We had a shop in Surulere where they were selling some of my imported goods, textiles and all that. And so we were just cutting casually, not really clothes and all that, but we were cutting. And then she would come to the shop and she would buy things and all that. And so my cousin that works for me then, that was managing my business, one day, he, as I came to the shop, because I, I, I stay in Ikeja, so I would come to the shop, spend some hours, and go back to Ikeja. As I came, he just called me, called me, called me. He said, he said you have to leave Lillian. He said, you have to leave Lillian. That's the way he talks. I said, what happened? He said, huh? He called my name. He said, what he saw today? He said, you have to leave Lillian. You have to fall. She's a Lagos girl. Leave her. I said, what happened now? He said, can I imagine? She was hugging another man. Praise the Lord. That was what he was telling me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, I saw her hugging another man. He said, he said in fact, he said, he's so angry. Meanwhile, he's not the one cutting her. Praise the Lord. Actually, it shouldn't hurt him. Because he works for me. Amen? And here, don't forget, I've come from Europe. My sense that even if you kiss somebody on the street, it doesn't mean anything in Europe. Seriously, this is the life in Europe. Praise the Lord. No, if you kiss somebody on the street, it doesn't mean anything. But in the church, hey! Abominable sin. And I said, don't kiss anybody before you will kiss you out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I sat this, my cousin, and I said, please tell me what exactly happened. He said he doesn't know, but he was coming from a distance. <laughs> First, he doesn't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said he was coming from a distance. Suddenly, he saw Lillian and just embraced the man and hugged the man. I said, so I sat there. He said, he was so angry. He said, she cannot come here again. I'm going to discharge her. I'm going to... He was trying to protect me, quote and unquote. He believed that I don't know anything about Nigerian girls. I don't know anything about Lagos. I said, he said, you are doing a Igbo system. We know these people in Lagos. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then, when I eventually saw her, Amen? I didn't even ask. 
I think it was much, much later we talked about it in discussion. Amen? But the evidence can be built upon. The evidence in meditation can be expanded upon. I never asked. You know what? Even back then, education tells you not to live your life on senses. Education alone. And that is why to have ignorant men in a place of leadership is terrible. It's terrible. Are you hearing me?